Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to write a simple code that you can see over here for controlling the motion of the ABB robot that's shown over there. So, this code moves the robot from the point P10 to the point P11 and finally to the point P12. And the code loops. The gripper is closed or open at certain points. For example, at point P10, the gripper is closed. Then, at the point P12, the gripper is open. Okay, so let us start from the very beginning. This is my teach pendant. And to access my program editor, I will click over here and then I will click or I will select the program editor. So this is my old code. I don't like that code anymore. So I will click on tasks and programs and I will click on file and then I will click on new program. And I don't want to save my old code. And here it is. So this is an empty program that has one procedure, main procedure, and has one module. Okay, so the next step is to define our points, or in the ABB's terminology, to define ROB target data types. How to do that? I will click over here, and then I will click and I will select program data and here I should find ROB target. I cannot see it over here in the main menu so I will select view all data types. View all data types and here if I scroll down here is my ROB target data type. I click on show data and I will automatically select new. Here's the name and these are the default parameters that I'm not going to change so I will just click OK. What is important to note here that the scope is global and the storage type is constant. I'm not going to change these definitions so I will click on OK. And let us observe, let us observe what happened over here. If you click on our point P10, we will observe that there are certain coordinates 2338, 68, and 274. So these co coordinates actually correspond to the position of our end effector or the position of its TCP tool center point in a certain coordinate frame. So, what I will not explain you in this video is how to define coordinate frames, how to define the tool coordinate frame, work object coordinate frame, or the user frames. I'm not going to do that in interest of brevity. So, in order to figure out what is the current frame, we click on jogging. And over here, you can actually see that the positions are expressed in coordinate system or coordinate frame work object. So, and if you click over here, here is our work object and the tool is tool 4. So here is our work object, someone defined it, defined it before me, someone who played with this robot. So I'm not going to change that since this is just introductionary video on robot coding, so I will leave it as it is. And let us go back to our program data. Here's our ROB target. If you click again, we can see all the data being stored. And here's our point. Next, we will learn how to modify the coordinates of this point. Okay, so I don't want my P10 to have these coordinates. So what I will do, I will jog my robot to another position. So for example, over here. And let's 
let us say that I want P10 to be to correspond to that point over there. So once I'm done, I release my dead man switch over here, and I will simply click on Edit Modify Position. And by clicking Modify, the coordinates of the point P10 will change. This is how you change the point, the memorized point. The next step is to introduce two additional points. So I will simply jog my robot to another position, let's say the position over there, and I will simply click on New, and over here I automatically obtain the point P20. I will use the same default parameters and I will click on OK. And the controller automatically assigns the coordinates of the TCP to that point. That is, it assigns the coordinates of our tool center point to that point. Okay, so let us define another point in the corner. So the point should be over there. So what do we do? We click on New, and we click on OK. So here are our three points. Now that we have defined and memorized our points, let us write a code that will move the tool center point from one point to another. So there are several ways for writing the code. One option is to use the teach pendant. And another and a more powerful option is to use the Robot Studio. Robot Studio is an amazing programming environment that can be used for code writing and for debugging. So I will open the Robot Studio and I'm assuming that your computer is connected through the Ethernet cable with your controller. And if that's the case, by clicking here on empty station, we can create our environment, Robot Studio environment. So we will wait a little bit. And over here, we will click on Add Controller. And by clicking on one click connect, we automatically connect our Robot Studio programming environment with our teach pendant and with our robot. So, how to see our code? Well, if we expand these menus over here, here's our main module or main procedure. So, excellent. What can we observe over here? We can see our points. So we can we are able to automatically obtain the definitions of our points. Here they are. They're const, rob target data type, p10, p20, and p30, and these are the coordinates. Okay, so let us try to modify this code. I will click over here and if I try to type something, I will obtain this screen. You need write access to controller in order to edit this document. Do you want Robot Studio to request write access? And if I click on yes, and if I look at my teach pendant, I will obtain this menu. The user, that's my name, AWH meant. Robot Studio requires write access to this controller. Grant, yes or no, or deny or grant, so I will click on grant. And I can see this menu revoke. If I want, again, to activate my teach pendant, I need to click on revoke. And then over here, right now, I can edit my code. I can write whatever I want. Okay, so here's my code. Here's my old code, and I will just modify these points. So P10 will stay P10, 
P11 is not anymore P11, it, it is P20. And over here, P12 is now P30. So let us analyze this code. This is the main procedure. Every program has to have a main procedure. Then, first I wait for 0 0.5 seconds. Then I set the gripper. This means that I'm closing the gripper. Then, after I close the gripper, I linearly move to point P10 with velocity V100. This, this fine defines the type of the motion. This means that once I reach the point P10, I will wait for a certain amount of time. And tool 4 is the tool frame. I'm currently in the tool 4 frame, so this is fine. We verify that. Then from the point P10, I move to the point P20. The motion is linear with velocity V100. Fine means that once I reach the point P20, I wait for a certain amount of time and I'm in tool 4. Once I reach P20, I open the gripper, open it, then I wait for some time, then I move linearly to the point P30 with velocity V100, fine motion, and tool 4. So this is our code. Now, to activate that code or to transfer this code to our teach pendant, we need to click over here. We were in controller menu. We need to click on rapid and we need to select apply all. And by selecting this, apply all changes, we have actually transferred this code to our teach pendant, that is to our controller. So let us see this code over here. Here is our teach pendant. I will click on revoke to gain access again. So let us look into our code. How to do that? We can click over here and we select the program editor. And here it is. Here is our code. Move P10, P20, P30. Wait, open the gripper, close the gripper. Wait, it's the same code as our code in our Robot Studio or Rapid environment. And finally, let us run our code. So let's see how to do that. I will click here on Debug and I will select this option PP to Main. This means that my cursor will be placed at the beginning of the main function. And then I simply press my dead end switch. I can hear that the motors are being activated or actually the brake is being released. And I simply select this button over here. And let's see what happens. You can monitor the cursor over here, what's happening. Here's our code. I'm keeping the dead man switch pressed because if I release the dead man switch, the code will stop. And again, if I press the dead man switch, I can hear that the brake is released. And again, I need to press this button over here. And here's what happens. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I make, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.